I want to turn, Glenn Greenwald, to your latest venture. You're leaving The Guardian this week, uh, the new newspaper and the website where you have been a columnist and a blogger. And you are beginning to start a new venture with the eBay founder, Pierre Omidyar. Tell us what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, the the um, venture is still something that we're shaping and, and figuring out how it's going to work. Um, but obviously, the choice um, for him to work with us and for us to work with him, and by us, I mean Jeremy Scahill, who started with Democracy Now! and has been a longtime uh, national security correspondent for The Nation, and Laura Poitras, the, the documentarian um, and, and great journalist in Berlin, I think gives people a strong sense of the kind of journalism that we intend to embolden and to strengthen. It's very unusual, I think, for people who are um, dissenting political figures or journalists, usually people like that have, are on the outside of institutional power. And what this is really about is being able to create a very well-funded, powerful, well-fortified institution that's designed not to just tolerate that kind of journalism, but to enable it and protect it and strengthen it and empower it. Um, and the people who we're going to select are all going to be people who take the same view of adversarial journalism, that it's about holding the most powerful factions accountable fearlessly and without regard to threats or, or repercussions from the government or corporate factions. Um, and I think it's going to be a very formidable force in, in shaping how journalism is understood and how it's practiced. Uh, Pierre Omidyar, the founder of eBay, has said he's going to put something like $250 million into your venture. He, at first, was possibly going to buy The Washington Post. Um, have you talked to Pierre Omidyar? Are you concerned about issues like, well, you know, he's a founder of eBay. eBay cut off, um, eBay owns PayPal, which cut off support for WikiLeaks. What kind of discussions have you had around that, which certainly would be relevant to what you want to do and your deep concerns about control? Sure. In the very first conversation or second conversation I had with Pierre, I asked him about that exact issue. And what he told me was that at the time, um, and this is absolutely true, he was not the CEO of eBay. He was not involved in this management or, or PayPal, um, and that he actually disagreed with that decision. And a newspaper that he owned, Honolulu, that he created and helped out, and at which he was working, editorialized against the government's attacks on, on WikiLeaks' funding. Uh, you know, I've moved several times now in my career from being an independent blogger on my own to being at Salon and to going to The Guardian and now to this. And each time I do it, I have people say, Look, the institution that you're going to go to, the people who are running it are going to force you into their orthodoxy. They're going to restrict what it is that you can do. And I always I say the same thing, which is I would never go anywhere or stay anywhere that in any way try to interfere with my editorial independence and freedom. And that's absolutely true of this venture. Um, you know, if you look at Pierre's record of advocacy over the last several years and especially the last five months, he's been incredibly supportive of the NSA reporting we've been doing of the notion of press freedom, he, 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 he would not start a new business in order to make money. He would only start a new business for some goal, some civic-minded goal. And that goal is not to replicate what other journalists got what they're doing or to restrict the independence of journalists. It's to enable independent journalists to be even more independent, to be even more adversarial and aggressive in how they do their reporting. And I'm completely convinced of the passion that he has behind that vision and his, his willingness to adhere to it. And at the end of the day, I think neither Jeremy Bohr nor myself would ever allow anybody to restrict what we do in any way. And that certainly includes him. But we have zero worries that that's his intention. Quite the opposite. We think he wants to um, enable us and others to do the kind of journalism that the United States I, I want to thank people for bearing with us. The audio is not so great today in this video stream. But lastly, you've engaged in this very interesting conversation with Bill Keller um, of The New York Times, uh, this debate between the two of you, the former executive editor of The Times. Keller began the debate by writing, we come at journalism from different traditions. I've spent a life working at newspapers that put a premium on aggressive but impartial reporting that expect reporters and editors to keep their opinions to themselves unless they relocate, as I have done, to the pages clearly identified identified as uh, the home of opinion. He ended saying, quote, embedded in The New York Times is institutional perspective and reporting methodologies are all sorts of quite debatable and subjective political and cultural assumptions about the world. And with some no um, noble exceptions, The Times by design or otherwise has long served the interests of the same set of elite and powerful factions. Its reporting is no less activist, subjective or opinion driven than the new media voices that sometimes condescendingly score. Can you comment on that and where you're going with your new venture? 
Sure. I mean, this came out of a New Yorker piece on the reporting that we did at The Guardian that quoted Bill Keller as saying that he never allowed me when he was the editor of the New York Times to take the lead in reporting on these NSA stories because I've expressed opinions about these topics previously. And so he and I then had an email exchange about that, and he then offered quite generously to have a debate and publish it in his column. And I think it really reflects um, two very competing, different, but uh, strong frames in how journalism was understood. The kind of traditional New York Times model that I think has neutered and, and in a lot of ways uh, helped to kill uh, journalism as a potent force for checking power, um, and the kind of journalism that I think we intend to do, which is much more passionate and spirited um, and intended to be overtly adversarial to those in power. Um, and I think you see the two competing visions um, in that exchange, and, and part of what I wanted to do is lay out the reason why I think our vision produces better journalism and, and to point to some of the really bad journalism that the New York Times has produced over the years alongside some good stuff. Um, I think it's a byproduct of this sort of opposite way of thinking. I want to thank you, Glenn, for being with us. Glenn Greenwald, columnist on civil liberties and U.S. national security issues, is leaving The Guardian this week um, and is going to start his new venture um, with uh, Philipp, uh, with uh, Pierre Homijar, the founder of eBay, a uh, new news organization with Laura Poitras and uh, Jeremy Scahill. This is Democracy Now! We'll link to all your latest articles, Glenn, at democracynow.org.